All right. Uh, good morning or good evening, everyone. Hopefully, everybody is doing well today. I'll wait till you guys can hear. Uh, give me confirmation that you can hear me and see me, and we'll go ahead and uh, get started. So today, I thought I would do a top ten of. Uh, lessons learned in the Philippines, things that I, I could have uh, did to make me more prepared for the move out here. Uh, we'll go over these. Now, these are just what I came up with. Personally, it doesn't mean that if you don't follow one of these, that your whole uh, move or travel to the Philippines is going to go terribly wrong. It just means that uh, for me, it would have helped with my move here, made things a little bit more smooth. So We'll go over that. Uh, we'll wait till we have maybe about 100 people in the room. So if you are watching the replay on this, then uh, if you probably move forward to the 15 minute mark or so, you can skip ahead through that. But I'll wait uh, for you guys to confirm you guys can hear me and see me. That's always a good thing. So I don't talk for too long without realizing uh, you guys can't hear me. <laughs> All right, we got uh, Damn Cars. How are you doing? Good morning from Subic. Good to see you, buddy. Um, just wait for somebody to confirm you can hear me or see me. We'll get going here. And like I said, we'll wait till I have maybe about 100 in the room, and then uh, we'll go ahead and shoot through my top 10. Probably only go about an hour today. I got uh, some things going on later, so... I can't hang out too long today. No marathon of like 10 hours or anything. That ain't happening. <laughs> okay, you can hear me and see me. All right, good deal. So we'll just catch up to speed here. While we uh, came back from our honeymoon in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, it was kind of our delayed honeymoon. And uh, we really enjoyed it. Uh, to, to date, so far, really... We have now traveled to Malaysia, Vietnam, Thailand, and out of those three, we really actually enjoyed Vietnam the best. I don't know. It's just uh, the culture and everything. I just kind of uh, really enjoyed it a lot. Uh, let's see. Okay, all everybody can hear me and see me. At what point in your relationship with Maya did you reveal your total financial picture? At what point do you recommend for other experts? Uh, I don't know if uh, there's an exact time. Everybody's going to be different. Some people uh, never do. They just keep that uh, totally, you know, quiet. But uh, I couldn't. I couldn't tell you when to, you know reveal it all but uh maya knows you know she knows about my different sources of income she knows when i will be getting social security she knows when my child support ends and she, you know she has a pretty clear indication of uh what uh, is coming in she sees for the most part um i've never sat down with a spreadsheet and went over every little line with her or nothing like that not not to that uh, point so i guess it's just up to the individual and what you feel comfortable with all right good question though um yeah i know a lot of people who just uh, they have this golden rule they just don't do it yeah all right yeah so we came back from uh, malaysia and uh then I have a trip to the U.S. in uh, end of May. I already purchased my ticket, a little pricey. Uh, made hotel reservations and things like that. And uh, then we have a, a, a really, probably our biggest trip that we've done. And then we might be, we kind of told ourselves we're just going to start staying around the philippines for quite a while we're going to start doing things in the philippines more uh, because there's a lot of things in the philippines we haven't seen so we will uh go to japan in august uh that is maya's dream destination <clears throat> excuse me and uh i'm pretty excited to see it too it's um really wasn't 
high up on my radar to see. I had other places I wanted to see first, but now that I've been looking into it, I'm pretty excited about uh, about checking it out. So, yeah, that'll be coming up in August. But uh, back home for me in May, yeah, flights have been rather high to the USA and back. So I spent uh, eight hundred dollars one way. I haven't bought the return the return ticket back yet. I just did the one way. I, I need to take care of some things, see family, and I need to kind of time it out and see exactly when I'll be going back. Um, so I'll wait on that. But yeah, I spent eight hundred dollars, and that's from Dumaguete to Manila, Manila to Taiwan. Taiwan to LAX, LAX to Minneapolis. Uh, it is a long trip, and I'm not, I'm not looking forward to that. But $800, and then I decided to pay an extra $200 to get the um, emergency row where I can stretch out my feet, and every time I have to go to the bathroom, I don't have to wake somebody up next to me and say, excuse me, excuse me, you know. I, I don't want to do that. So uh, be careful in the province or jungle where dengue is prevalent. Use mosquito repellent and lotion. I caught it down in Davao end of December last year. It's no effing joke. Still dealing with joint pain. Oh, yeah. I've got a buddy who had uh, dengue. It is no joke. And also good if you're coming out here to have travel medical insurance, you know, just uh, I've had I've met more people who've come down with dengue. Luckily, I, I've never had it. But yeah, always a good idea. Uh, not always true. It just depends. Uh, you know, if if you come through, most of the time I've come through and they haven't asked. Usually it's the airline that has asked. They, they've said, hey, need to see a return ticket. And um, so it's usually not, um, usually they don't ask. But if they do ask and you don't have it, guess what? You're going to be pulled out of line. You're going to be made to purchase a ticket on the spot, which is why I recommend one of those throwaway tickets. It's on my, uh, in the description, it's only $16, much better way to go. So I wouldn't uh, chance it, pay the $16 for uh, one of those throwaway tickets, and uh, much better. Uh, she does want to see snow. We've already kind of decided when the time comes to go see snow, we will actually go to Vietnam during a specific time of year. We will go to Sapa, which is a beautiful, beautiful area. And uh, they typically get snow every year for uh, within like a two-month range they get snow. And so we would really, really want to go there. Uh, maybe you could do a video about whether when to real financial steer Filipina, especially if not. Oh, that's a good idea, actually. Yeah. That is something I'll add on my list. Always looking for video ideas, so that's not a bad idea. Airlines, yeah, that's right. That's usually when they check is at the airport. And, yeah, you got to have one. So this last time uh, when Maya and I came back into the country together, we had the Bali Kabayan, or I, I got the Bali Kabayan visa, so the one-year stamp, which was nice. So I don't have uh, any visa fees this time around. Uh, morning. Wife and I are heading up to Dumaguete from Chateau to make our weekly Robinson grocery run. All right. Fantastic. We're probably going to go off to... Oh, now uh, the Valencia market later today, maybe. Ouch, flying is expensive. Just purchased my flight to Spain in July. I had to pay for exit row seats myself. Yeah. Um, business class, first class, it's too much money. But to pay the extra $200 for the emergency row so I can stretch my feet out and get up and use the bathroom anytime I want. For me, that was well worth it. So... Yeah, it's uh, it's expensive. By the way, guys, thank you guys who are YouTube members. I appreciate that. Uh, I see a couple people here. Hey, good morning, uh, JJ from beautiful BGC. We were there briefly. We didn't really get enough time where we could really see anything. We were at the uh, 
Venice Grand Canal Mall in Taguig. And we thought we had enough time maybe to go hang out and uh, kind of take pictures and walk around. But uh, the mall didn't end up opening till 11 a.m. And it was just cutting it a bit too close for our flight back to Dumaguete. So we ended up uh, just seeing the outside. <laughs> I, I've been there. I went there one time, but uh, just briefly. Uh, Maya was looking forward to seeing it, though. All right. All right. So I guess we could uh, we'll, we'll wait a few minutes here. But um, yeah, uh, a lot, lot of traveling still coming up this year. And uh, I'll be kind of looking forward to relaxing for a little bit. Let the, let the savings account go back up again. Uh, hey, Gio from Queens, New York. Good job with the Malaysia videos. Would you say the infrastructure roads internet is on par with Thailand? It's probably better, honestly. Uh, Malaysia is probably uh, the only thing better than Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur, would probably be Singapore. Singapore is probably the top, and Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, right beneath it. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely first world. That city in particular, I can't say the whole country. If you look, if you look up Malaysia, they'll they still list it as a developing nation. Uh, but if you go to Kuala Lumpur, it's first world all the way. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, so we we do have the. Uh, I don't know when we'll get back through. Maybe when we're returning from uh, Japan in August, possibly. We'll have to take a look here. We did learn a lesson, though. Uh, we booked a condo stay outside of the Venice Grand Canal. And I think I was paying 40 bucks a night, maybe more. And uh, came in late that night, turned on the lights and the freaking cockroaches. So that's why I made that hotel list. It's on my website uh, for all the hotels I've stayed at and resorts throughout the Philippines because so hit and miss here in the Philippines with hotels and resorts. You just don't know. So. Also, thank you for that one video you did about the day rooms in Terminal 3 in Manila. We took advantage of it when we went to Japan. Yeah, yeah, we, we definitely uh, used that and it came in quite handy. It's, it's not expensive either. And uh, hit the spot. We were able to have some snacks and have a good rest so yeah that was that was nice so you guys went to japan too okay maya is uh super excited about that uh hey ray from wisconsin down one next week to begin a series of trips this year for the transition to full-time living oh, okay well i will be uh in your area and at the end of may beginning of june i'll be in the wisconsin minnesota region uh, i'll be going camping in minnesota uh, but I'll be stopping off in Wisconsin as well. So I, I miss the uh, the freshwater fishing and uh, the camping and stuff there. Oh, the hotel at, in Malaysia was just unbelievable. And it was like 60-some meters. It was huge, big soaker tub. Uh, first time Maya had ever taken a, uh, a soak in a hot tub. We actually went to the mall and got the... Um, you know, the fizzy bathing, you know, for the hot tub that you put in. Yeah, she was, she did like three times, I think. So, yeah, Dowen is nice. I like Dowen. Uh, a bit away from everything. So, for me, a, a little bit of a pain if you want to go and get groceries. But I, I did hear they opened up a, a kind of a grocery store now, I believe. So, you yeah. know. Anyway, we have been going, oh, we've been going about 15 minutes already. We're just at around 50 people. So maybe I should just start my top 10 list. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll go ahead and run through here. My uh, first one I got will be backup sources to get money. That's something I made a mistake on when I first got here. And I preach this all the time. That's probably one of the biggest things is you gotta have backup sources to get money. Um, I still hear about it all the time. I hear about guys who uh, who don't uh, a card, you know, stops working or 
uh, the bank locks them out for whatever reason and they have no backup source, they're basically screwed. So that's probably number one. Uh, it's been four years since I've been to Japan. I'm going back this year. I hear the prices are down because of the deflation of the economy. Can't wait to go. Yeah, oh yeah, we're pretty excited. Um, like I said, it, Japan was not even on my list. It really wasn't on my list. I don't know why, but uh, and then Maya is like, this is my dream place. I really want to go there. And she's went to Vietnam. She went to Thailand, Malaysia, pretty much all the places I really wanted to go, uh, you know, again. And she said, let's go to Japan. And I started researching. I was like, wow, this looks really amazing. So, yeah, I, I can't wait to, to hit up Japan. Yeah, we bought up lots in Dowen interviewing contractors in the next couple of weeks. Oh, okay. Fantastic, right? Uh, how difficult is it for a Filipina to work full time? A lot of the women I'm meeting online aren't working. I have no idea how they're living. It seems like families are counting on one provider. That is actually very typical. In fact, you'll see like one family member who goes overseas. They call them OFWs. And they work their butt off and they send money. And the rest of the family just sits around spending the money. Uh, not a fair thing whatsoever, but it's it's pretty common here. And it puts a lot of pressure on that one person. I, I don't get why they do that. Every every able body should be working if possible, you know, to get out of the hole or get ahead or save, but they just don't seem to do it. So, yeah, that's uh, kind of what happens, yeah. Um, but, yes, there is full-time work. But there is uh, they are discriminatory here. So if you are not a young, pretty girl, guess what? You're probably not working at the mall. You're, never, you're probably not a grocery store cashier. If you ever notice in the malls and the cashiers here, they're young, pretty girls usually. Um, if you were an older lady, you're probably not – going to get one of those jobs call centers they typically seem to be in their college after college but yeah i uh, just started watching it last week been binge watching like crazy oh man you must be really bored steve <laughs> hopefully i'm not putting you to sleep there really isn't part-time jobs here in the philippines only full-time yeah that's correct yeah it's usually just a, a full time Yep, lots of discrimination towards older Filipinas. And I, uh, when I was working at the English school in Cebu, there was, uh, she was a tall, pretty Filipina, and she wanted a job as a flight attendant. And she told me that she was denied because she had uh, like a few scars on her arms. And they denied her just because she had a couple of scars on her arms. Because at Cebu Pacific, I guess they wear the short sleeve. And they said, nope, nope, you got scars on your arms. So, yeah, they 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 discriminate here and openly and have no problem doing so. <laughs> One U.S. dollar nets you 124,740 yen. Wow. It, it reminds me of Vietnam where everything was like, I think, 24,000 Vietnamese dong for $1. So, all right, let's continue on my list here. Uh, that I did put that uh, on the title, so I suppose we should talk about it. Number two, don't rush into a relationship. Now, obviously, for some people, that works. Some people, they, they get off the plane, they've been chatting with somebody, and instantly they met the right girl. Um, but for most people, they haven't. And that's why I say don't rush into it immediately. Kind of check out what's here. You're going to be like a kid in a candy store when you first arrive. So don't rush the relationships. And I, I do see guys tend to move girls in very quickly. And I think usually what happens is they almost feel bad for them. Maybe they see their living conditions and living in a boarding house and they end up moving them in. And two weeks later after they've been together, they're already living together. It's like, you know, I know you feel bad maybe for her, maybe for her living conditions, but uh, for her, it's somewhat normal. So, yeah, uh, we'll go into another one here. We'll continue throughout the live stream. Number three, no long-term lease within the first 90 days. Don't jump into a big 
long-term lease right away. Uh, with me, when I was in Cebu, I jumped into a long-term lease and almost instantly after I got into the lease, I discovered, wow, I wish I would have been at this condo on this side of town. So you, you really should just do like an Airbnb for a month or two months, figure out, is this the city for you? And within the city, is this the right area? And then within that area, is this the right condo? And the right in the right unit itself so don't rush into the uh, long-term lease immediately because it's just not worth it along those lines uh don't do more than a one month deposit if at all possible unless it is just an absolute gem that you cannot live without you know but otherwise try to avoid it because deposits are often waived bye bye here and uh, along those lines, uh, try to stick with the short-term leases, like six months or less, month to month if possible. Uh, try not to have anything in your name, electric internet. Try to keep it in the landlord's name where you just pay the one bill and they take care of it so you don't have a bunch of things in your name. Makes it easier. We'll continue in, uh, uh, in a few minutes. We'll just go through comments here. Instant hot mess, yeah. 17 minutes late, but catching up. No, no, no worries at all. <laughs> hey, George, we arrived on Monday, celebrated our third wedding anniversary. Also, thank you for your advice on going through the foreigner visa line at immigration. I now have the Bollock and Bayan visa. Okay, yeah, good deal. Yeah, I made that mistake when Maya and I went on our very first trip. She split off and went to the Filipino immigration, and that's when she was questioned for like 30, 45 minutes. If we would have tried, if we would have been in the same line going through together uh, when we went to Thailand, she probably would have been questioned for that long. So, would you like to see more Americans moving to the Philippines? If yes, why? Would I like to see more? I, I really don't have any thoughts on it either way, to be honest. My life would be okay if, if more decided to move here or less. It, it really doesn't matter. Um, in Dumaguete, we are a heavy expat community, and with it comes pros and cons. So there seems to be a lot of drama with the expats sometimes. But on the flip side, you also have uh, the ability to make a lot of friends and find people that you have things in common with. So, yeah, I don't uh, really have any opinion on it one way or the other. We kind of live away from more of the expat area here in, in Dumaguete. Uh, congratulations. Well-deserved time together uh, traveling and having fun. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, we're, we're enjoying. My Filipina is 31 years younger than me. Am I making a mistake? Uh, well, how old is she and how old are you? It, it can also depend on where the, where the ages are. For example, if she's 18 and you're 31 years older than her, then maybe a mistake. But if she's like 28 and you're 31 years older, then yeah, that's uh, that's a bit different. But you know, you, you got two consenting adults. Uh, really, it's up to you guys. Uh, busy week in Dumaguete, it seems. I saw there was a huge turnout at the U.S. Embassy session at Ground Zero. The more drama I see, two expats got in a fight at a restaurant. Yep, that uh, that happens. <laughs> I'm aiming toward Davao City because I've heard there are not many expats. Can you confirm? Yeah, very true. I I like Davao a lot. Davao was always uh, one of my favorite places. It is very spread out. So the first time I was in Davao, I liked it. The second time I, I'm talking about living, not visiting. The second time I really liked it because I had my motorbike there and I was able to, to go all over the place instead of relying on the grab taxi. But yeah. Yeah, yeah, it will. Uh, Maya's got one too. I've got one. So we are set for Japan. Yeah, that will definitely come in handy. Came in handy in uh, Vietnam as well. Yeah, a lot of expat fights in Dumaguete recently. Yep, I've uh, heard of a few. <laughs> I uh, this is part of the reason why I don't even uh, go to 
I, I don't really go to ground zero. There's just way too many foreigners there. And I don't, I don't hang out at bars with other foreigners. I don't usually go to the meetups, you know, like these uh, vlogger meetups. Not that I don't want to meet a bunch of people that watch my channel. I, I am more than happy to. I'm always appreciative that people watch my channel. I'm always surprised, to be honest. <laughs> but I'd rather just meet people one-on-one. -on -one. It, it, it's getting more difficult for me to break away and meet every person. I used to be able to really, if somebody reached out to me and said, hey, let's meet for coffee, I, I could do it. But now that I'm married and, you know, have a, a family life and my time is a bit busier, you know, I, I go to the gym now and I, um, I kind of have a routine going on. So it's a little bit harder for me, but I, I still meet up with people usually on a, on a weekly basis. What are the best places to visit around Davao? Uh, Davao's got some amazing nature. There's Lake Cebu. There is, uh, it's just beautiful, beautiful place. Uh, there's another place called Ali Wegweg Falls, which is just amazing, uh, as well. Uh, in Davao, there's a place called Jack's Ridge, great restaurant viewing the city over the city at night. Really nice. And, um, yeah, so there's, uh, I think I have some articles on my website about, uh, things that I wrote about Davao, places to see and things to do. 31 year age difference. I'm booking my ticket ASAP. Never been there. <laughs> yeah, you should. Uh, 52, 21. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know. The maturity level at, at 21, it depends on what kind of life she's led. If she's already been working, maybe she's the older sibling and she's had a bunch of responsibility put on her. So it's just hard to say. But if you guys are happy, you know, I, I wouldn't worry about what other people say. You know, if you're happy, go for it. How's it? How's it Geo? You mean, uh, how is my name Geo? My name is my name is Giovanni and uh, Geo for short. If that's what you meant, I'm not sure. Uh, which did you prefer most, Davao City or CDO? Uh, they both have a few pros and cons. Uh, CDO, I do like some things better. I do like that there is a big port there that enables you to travel by boat as well. Uh, it has a specific area that I like a lot, Uptown. I do like that the shopping malls are all kind of right next to each other. That's kind of cool. Uh, Davao, they're all spread out. Um, they do have whitewater rafting and a lot of nature around CDO. But Davao also has that, but it's just much more spread out. Um, CDO has a really cool island not so far away called Kamegan. It's really kind of, a, I, I give Davao a little bit of an edge, but not, not by much. She lives in Leyte. All the best girls are in Leyte. <laughs> uh, oh, it's all good, Gio. Okay, gotcha. What's the best way to get flowers delivered to your Filipino when you are at LDR? Well, there's a lot of flower companies. Uh, if you Google on, you know, just uh, flowers, delivered Philippines, you'll, you'll find a lot of stuff, but, um, yeah, I don't know if I have a, an exact link to give for you. Amazon. I, I, I use Amazon quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, did you find Davao and Mindanao in general too far away from other islands? I found that you are really kind of cut off. Hmm. That is the one thing that I really love about Dumaguete is Dumaguete is very central, very easy to go to Mindanao, to uh, Cebu, to Siki or Apo Island, the whole. It's just really easy. Um, that's one thing I really like. So, yeah, you know, you do travel is much more difficult for sure. Island Rose for flowers. There we go. Uh, besides the China drama, are expats at all concerned about Duterte versus Bong Bong right now? Expats? No. Maybe Filipinos, but uh, no, I, I wouldn't say so. All right, let's get back into the other. Uh, I went into three of the 
top 10. Uh, no big purchases within the first six months. Don't buy a bunch of big stuff. Don't buy a bunch of furniture. Don't buy a motorbike or a car. More people I know, they, they decide after six months that they don't like it here. They don't want to live here. Maybe they want to go move to Thailand. And they bought a car and a household full of furnishings. So definitely go with a furnished place. Maybe just rely on public transportation for the first six months or so. Don't go into the getting big purchases. Again, these are my opinions. It doesn't mean if you went out and bought a car after three months that you did something wrong. You know, I'm just uh, for me personally, and sometimes uh, these spill over into what other people think as well. Uh, maintain home country residence. What I mean by that is forwarding mail address, uh, voter registration, a local phone number in your home country. These are all very important. Uh, maintain good credit in your home country. A lot of people just let their credit go to shit. I talked to a guy the other day who said, oh, yeah, I just stopped paying all my all my bills once I came over here. He just stopped paying all his uh, credit card bills and everything. I'm like, why would you ruin your credit? I don't think that's a good idea. Uh, we'll jump through the rest of them. Don't sell your home or car till after a year. And when I say a year, I mean... Within that year, you should be making some, a lot of trips out here and seeing whether it's really for you, um, doing like a test run to make sure it's something you really like. Uh, don't, don't sell your home <laughs> immediately or your car, all of that. Uh, and along the same lines, don't move here until after several extended stays. The people who come out here two weeks at a time, two weeks, two weeks, I don't think you really fully appreciate what it would feel like to live here. Two weeks is just too short. And, uh, okay, and the last one, and that will be 10, will be check out other Southeast Asian countries. Uh, because a lot of people get here, and I see it all the time, they end up moving to Thailand, or they move to Malaysia, or Vietnam, or Cambodia, and sometimes vice versa. You'll see them coming from Thailand or Vietnam to the Philippines. Um, check out uh, all of Southeast Asia because there could be a better fit for you. Or maybe you'll find out that this is truly the best fit for you. I found that out. You know, I moved to Vietnam for six months, and although I really liked it, I liked the Philippines a little bit better on some of the uh, things like dating and English speaking and the friendliness. So, yeah, so there we have it. All right, let's skip back to the. Uh, will you take in any twin or Brewers baseball games if you are in those areas? Chicago is always nice for a day trip. Probably not enough time. Um, I'm really uh, going there to do a camping trip with my sons, long overdue. And so, uh, probably pretty busy with that. Fishing. Yeah. Love the content. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I got to get things done. I, I mean, I'm going to renew my U.S. driver's license. I'm going to get a U.S. phone number. I'm going to get a T-Mobile account. I'm going to take care of some banking issues. And, um, yeah, and then camping, sons, uh, fishing, see my mom, uh, sisters, so some other family members I got to talk to. Uh, 65, 23, never been happier, better to live your life, forget about the age. Yeah, I agree. Uh, as long as you're two consenting adults and you guys are happy, you know, hey, I wouldn't worry about it, right? What are the chances of finding available 40 plus year old cuties? I don't think I could date a 21 year old. No offense, but I think we have a hard time finding relatable topics to talk about. Well, you know, you never know, but uh, Christian Filipina is a good one. Uh, I got links to the dating sites I recommend down in the description, but uh, yeah, it's, it's sure it's quite possible. I know I know several guys uh, who feel the same way. I've heard that you have really cool neighbors, and that is the best part of living in the Philippines. Well, the guy right next door is just kind of an oddball, uh, but other than that, uh, yeah, they're pretty good. <laughs> uh, this is my neighbor, Travis. <laughs> I'm an older guy. I found a mature 33-year-old there. Yeah. So Maya is 30. 
she'll be 31 in May and uh, I feel like I hit the jackpot. So single two. Can you cross over your US number at a convenient rate, maybe prepaid? I I really don't know all the plans. I'm just I know all, a lot of my friends who have T-Mobile and they have good luck with it, using it, getting their bank codes. And I've had a lot of issues. I did a video on it. And uh, so, yeah. Notice the four stars on your T-shirt, Italy versus Croatia in the Euros in June. Enjoy. Croatia wins as always. <laughs> uh, it didn't always be that. It wasn't always the case, but yeah. Um, I, I love my Italy shirts. I, I've got the, I've got the hats, I've got the shirts, you know. Um, I do like, I do like uh, soccer a lot, actually. Um, well, we went over the top ten. Those are my top ten. Any, uh, anybody disagree or, or not? We'll see. <laughs> so. Anyway, we uh, yeah, I've got uh, my my trip. I don't know if it, I, I don't know if I'll have time to meet anybody or not. I've had a few people reach out and say, "Hey, can you uh, can you meet up if you're in this area?" Chances are, I probably won't have a whole lot of time. But uh, funny enough, I do have this list of things that I want to purchase to bring back here. Um, I've got I've already got uh, friends telling me, "Oh, can you bring me that back?" This Maya wants books. I bought, I bought Maya one of these, um, you know, the uh, Kindles, you know, like, like this. But um, she still prefers the actual book in her hand. When we got to Malaysia, we, we saw a bookstore in the mall that was just huge. I mean, with a coffee shop and everything, any, anything that would uh, rival anything in the U.S. And she was in heaven. So I got to buy some books for her. There's some kind of food there's some types of food out there. I have a list of food that I want to eat that I just haven't been able to find here that I've I really miss. So be doing that. Yes, the banking info. Have to wait for the ACR card. Need the stateside number for banking. Yep. Uh, has vandalism been an issue? Heard about cars being scratched up, bike seats turned into confetti when going into town, any town really. That's pretty rare. I, I've never really heard of that. I mean, can it happen? Sure. Uh, when parking your motorbike, always park somewhere that's kind of a busy area that has a parking attendant. And you shouldn't ever have that uh, issue. Um, cars scratched up. You know, I, again, I will be, uh, we will be buying a car this year. That's one of our things. Uh, because with Maya and uh, Maya's daughter, Nora, when the three of us go somewhere, I don't like going on a motorbike anywhere more than just kind of really short little uh, trips because it's just, I, it just feels kind of dangerous. So in groceries and things like that, it's kind of a pain. You can never get buy more than like three little bags because, you know, it's hard, hard to transfer or hard, hard to transfer uh, or carry it back home. So uh, my goal in moving to the Philippines will not have deep intellectual conversations with a Filipina. Will not be to have deep intellectual. <laughs> okay. <laughs> will I move back to the U.S.? Highly unlikely. Uh, I would have to have a turn in... Um, in my health or something for me to go back and even then maybe i would look into thailand or malaysia which also has very very good health care so uh i don't think i need to send a bali buy in box um maybe maybe but it takes quite it takes so long for you to get it but i i tell you what i have been enjoying amazon because amazon i usually typically get in about 10 days so uh, thank you for Amazon Essentials for Pinas. We'll definitely add some items. Uh, translation device is crucial, taking lessons, but it'll take a while to pick up Tagalog. Yeah. Yeah. So everyone loves Italy. 
<laughs> well, you know, I mean, Italy does is known for fine goods, you know, I mean, clothing, leather. Um, when you think of an Italian product, people usually automatically assume quality, right? The cars and clothing, and, uh, things like that. And uh, the food, of course, one of the top foods in the world. I would say Thai food for me is up there as well. Electronics due to un upcharge and penis. You know, I don't even watch the, I don't even watch anymore. I stopped watching. Uh, I stopped watching before I got here and uh, I don't really miss it. Now I did, I did used to watch, I was a Vikings fan. I was a big Vikings fan, but I was, I've been crushed so many times with the Vikings with the, yeah, so I, I I don't really watch anymore. I did have season tickets to the Minnesota Wild, the hockey team, NHL, and I loved that. In fact, for me, there's no better game live than hockey. I mean, it's not – there's no sitting around with all these commercials. You know, football and baseball, there's a lot of downtime. But hockey, it's go, go, go. And uh, I enjoyed that a lot. had my season tickets and – I would even sell uh, like the big games. I would sell the big game tickets and double my profit. And if they, if the Minnesota Wild went to the uh, uh, playoffs, I could sell those tickets for four or five times the amount. So marriage is a big commitment. What made you decide to do it? Well, I'm not, uh, well, when I hit age 50, I just kind of decided, you know, I, I don't really want to date anymore. And, uh, I found Maya. Maya's got, uh, the intellect. She's a go-getter. Uh, she's well-read. She likes to travel and we just kind of, um, we just had a lot of things in common. So, yeah. Um, I still am kind of an old soul. I still believe in marriage and, yeah. Yep, I do have some surprise for her and also a Valentine's Day dinner. So you don't need to go overboard here like you did in the States, like with jewelry and things like that. That's the good thing about here. You don't need to do all of that. Just go for a dinner, maybe some flowers, and, and you're good. You're golden. In the States, you know, they're talking chocolates and roses and dinner and maybe a piece of jewelry. Nah, not here. Warren Moon, my military buddy, was a Viking fan. Warren Moon, um, yeah, he, he went to the Vikings and did pretty good for a little while. We had a lot of – Vikings always got the quarterbacks from other teams. Brett Favre, Warren Moon, Randall Cunningham, all these people. <laughs> Can a resident of the USA send a package from the Amazon and Philippines to a Filipino family? Yeah. All you have to do is put in the Philippines address, and then you look for the free shipping over $49, or uh, on the filter, click free shipping, so it just shows the free shipping stuff. And, yeah, you absolutely can do that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So let's see how many uh, thumbs up we have here, guys. Uh, 100, that would be awesome. I'm from the U.S. After my divorce, I will never get married. Yeah, well, uh, a lot of people don't want to, and certainly, you know, you, you don't need to. Does your relationship feel any different after marriage? Yeah. I would say we feel more connected, like it's more like at a level of like, okay, hey, we're, we're married now. We can't be, you know, if we do have an argument, I, I think we solve an argument much, much quicker now than we did before we were married. Um, now, if we have an argument, it's, it's over really quickly because now we kind of laugh. It's like, you know, hopefully it continues that way. All you got to do is uh, add the um, add the um, Filipino address. International shipping fax free forty nine. Yep, over forty nine dollars 
three. It doesn't have to be the item is over 49. Your total order has to be over 49. And you don't want to go over 200 US dollars because then you'll get uh, import fees. So if you wanted to order $400 worth of stuff, you would have to split it up to two orders so you can avoid that, which is kind of silly. You know, I mean, you can order 200 bucks, ship it, and then immediately two minutes later, place another order and do another 200 bucks just to avoid the import fees. Oh man, I have a list. Uh, some a lot of it's junk food. I hate to say, and I'm actually a pretty healthy eater now and going to the gym. But there's some thing that um, uh, some things that I really uh, want to uh, do. For example, chocolate chip cookie dough ice cream. I have never found it here, and I crave it. <laughs> um, certain cheeses and crackers I want to try. It was just for a snack. Um, I used to go to this place in Hudson, Wisconsin. It was a, known for its brisket and brisket sandwiches and br brisket platters. And I'm, I'm going to eat there. Believe it or not, I would like to go to Chipotle. Um, uh, berries and yogurt. I like fresh berries. So there, there's just a handful of things. Uh, good salads are hard to find here. Her fish tank are, is doing well. It's thriving. I think she's got like nine fish. Uh, usually for me is around 10 days, 10 to 14 days. Yeah, de depends on the region. Um, we really, really like Malaysia, first world all the way. At this point, I don't think it would be something that right now we're just enjoying traveling. Uh, break break it up a little bit sometimes you know maybe you get a little frustrated or you get bored or something in the Philippines and we take a trip and go somewhere so yeah 10 days to three weeks it also depends on the shipping company ninja van very very quick and efficient and there's a few other companies that Amazon will use that are a bit slow Hey, good morning, uh, Michael from Samoa Island. It's been a while. Sent a lady to a lady in jacket do the rainy season two, two weeks to the city. Yeah, so that's, that's not so bad. Frozen custard. Yeah, actually, uh, believe it or not, a peanut buster parfait from Dairy Queen. I, I am craving that too. <laughs> Gio Myers might be the next Ben and Jerry's, yeah. Don't look in my 50s, can pass for 40. I appreciate that. Well, you know, I, I, I'm not really totally bald. I do have my hair. I just have the receding, and I decided to shave it off. Not only that, I'm always driving around on my, on my motorbike, and I didn't really like the uh, helmet hair. You know, when you do have a, a, a head full of hair, and you take Helmet off and it's all over the place. <laughs> so I just decided to get rid of my hair. Safe travels. I've got a bug out. We're racing in Florida tonight. Awesome. Well, thank you again for being a YouTube member. Have a have a good night. I stayed by Kenosha and Waukegan, retired Navy. Oh, okay. I moved from Mocktown, Newtown to BGC. As much as I love the convenience, I really miss the chill vibe of Mock Ton. I like Mock Ton a lot. Yeah. Malaysia's expat retirement program, MM2H, has gotten far more stringent. Their applications are down 90% since the rule changes. Yep. They are looking to change that again. I guess there's another region that you can do the MM2H that is uh, much lower qualifications, less stringent. I can't remember the name of it, but uh, you have to search it. Great cheese when, yeah, cheese curds, believe it or not. Yeah, I used to like cheese curds. Yeah, I love Elo Elo. Elo Elo is a great city, too. Thailand. Yeah, actually, the Philippines has Dairy Queen through, you know, like in Cebu and Manila. But they don't have things like uh, peanut buster parfaits. They just have a kind of a limited menu. So if you got to mention this is Joe Rivera, your counselor. Oh, I appreciate that. Yeah. 
Yeah, I've been doing a lot of consultations this week. I've actually had seven consultations this week. Might be the most I've ever had in a week. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, yeah, all that stuff is gone. There's no masks. There's no jabs. There's no vaccination. All, all throughout Southeast Asia now, it's, it's all gone. And hopefully it never comes back, right? What a, what a, I, when that was going on, I thought this is going to go on forever. This is, uh, this is just the way things are going to be. We're going to be wearing masks for the rest of our lives. I missed um, Filipinos and their big smiles, you know, I mean, because, um, you know, the, the Philippines was probably one of the strictest as far as uh, the COVID. Any updates on Philippines Digital Nomad? No, I haven't seen anything else uh, on it. Uh, do you ever have a masseuse come to your apartment? A couple's massage sounds like a pretty good Valentine's Day treat. Can you think of it? Uh, Maya and I do go and, and do massages. Uh, in Thailand, we were doing like two a day. In Vietnam, we did it a few, three, four times. We had a hot stone massager, which was awesome. Um, here, we do get like a foot and uh, leg massage sometimes. But uh, no, I haven't had anybody come here. But that's a good idea. Well, uh, you know, Maya is from here. Her daughter goes to school here. So it just makes sense right now. You know, if we want to go somewhere, she, she's got family here that, uh, you know, nowhere it can stay with family while we go somewhere. So if we leave here, we lose that. But Ilo Ilo is a great city. Don't get me wrong. Serene Shergal recently tried passing a digital nomad visa in the process. Yeah, I know they, they really want to pass one. I think it would be a good idea. So I had a work visa for my first two and a half years in the Philippines. And uh, it was multiple entry. I could come and go as I wanted, which was really cool. Um, so, yeah. In Vietnam, I had a multiple entry one-year business visa. They got rid of that. That was great. And then I came back here, and I've been really on the tourist visa the entire time. except so for this uh, last trip from uh, Malaysia back to here, I came on the Bali Kabayan visa. So now I have the one year, but it won't last that long because I'm going to the U.S. in uh, May, end of very end of May. So it, uh, when I come back, I'll be back on a tourist visa again, then out to Japan, and then back on a on a Bali Kabayan, and then I'll do the marriage visa. So, yeah, that's right. I I, I know there was like uh, they're working on a bill for it. So you know how things go here. It can go pretty slow. So, yeah, I'm not sure how much longer I'll go, guys. Uh, we'll go a little bit longer here. Uh, it was just kind of a quick uh, live stream. Just maybe once a month or so, I'll do one. Uh, I hadn't done I hadn't done a live stream in like a year prior to a couple months ago. Philippines doesn't want to discourage expat spending because Thailand was starting to become the favorite expat destination. I think it probably still is. And Vietnam had to change their tourist thing to where you can get 90 days multiple entry as well. Cambodia's got a year. Uh, Malaysia, you get 90 days upon entry. So, yeah, there's, there's a lot of... Um, Countries that have much better deals when, when coming into the country for visas. So Philippines probably needs to revamp that. So, Hey, buddy, how are you? Uh, thank you. Safe travels, quality time back in the, in the States. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, we met up uh, yesterday and uh, did a video. So actually, that'll come out in the next few days or so here. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually, uh, other than the travel time, I'm looking forward to the trip back to the U.S. Uh, it'll be much more frequent, uh, for sure. It should be, have to budget in more uh, for travel. 
Uh, they don't draw that many viewers. Now, I don't know. For some reason, uh, my live streams don't get a lot of views. Um, they used to. I used to have live streams. That I'd, I'd have live streams where I had over 600 people in the room, and now I'm now I'm lucky to break 100. <laughs> so I'm not sure. Maybe um, maybe the title, maybe the time of day. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm doing it too early. Maybe I should do them later in the day. I'm not sure. I'll we'll get your opinion on it. Since you restarted your live streams, they still draw a crowd. How, how often will you do? I remember you did often did on weekends. Yeah, so maybe once a month or maybe twice a month or so I will do uh, a live stream. I think maybe I had more viewers because people knew exactly when my live streams were going to be. And so they knew they could just jump on the channel and there'd be a live stream. So. Uh, how long did it take you to set up utilities there as a foreigner? I know things run on Filipino time there, much slower than the States. Well, the, I was like I was mentioning earlier, I think you should have electric, internet, all those things in the landlord's name if possible and already up and running and going uh, before you even move in. It's much easier. And if you have any problems and you need to move out, you don't have all these things in your name. So, uh, Gio, what? Do you have to do to take your girlfriend abroad? I've heard it's hard for Filipinos to go if they have never been like Malaysia. Uh, the very first time out, uh, Maya was questioned for about 30 to 45 minutes. So when you do go out together, you want to go out uh, in the same line through the foreigner passports and go up together. Say you're traveling together. Uh, you may have to show proof that uh, of her hotel of her return flight, photos together that, you know, you have some history, conversation, you know, from, you know, correspondence uh, with dates and stuff showing how long you've known each other. She may need to show things like a bank or maybe she has a job. Other than that, that's pretty much it. Uh, they may make you sign some document saying you're responsible for bringing her back something like that. But uh, Maya didn't have to do that, but she had to show pictures and correspondence of us. She also had to show her bank and her work. But that was trip number one. Trip number two, three, no problems whatsoever. And Japan won't be any. And now that we're married, there, there shouldn't be any more issues ever. So should be pretty easy. But that first trip, yeah, that first trip out, Travel together, stick together in line, go through the foreign passports. Because when you're going through immigration, off to the left, it'll say Philippine passport holders this way, foreign passport holders this way. Both stay in line together going through the foreign passport uh, together. That will save you a bit of a headache. So anyway, uh, hopefully that answers your question here. So. All right, a couple more minutes, guys. Uh, I wasn't going to go super long today. Just uh, like I said, I've got uh, some things going on. And just thought I would jump in and do a quick live stream. And uh, maybe in the comments of this live stream, you guys can let me know if there's a certain time or day that works best for people. Uh, am I doing the live stream too early? Should I be doing it later, perhaps? I don't know. Or earlier? I don't know. Let me know and I'll, I'll try to work it out where I get uh, the best time for these uh, live streams. So, and uh, before we end it, if you haven't given me a thumbs up, I would appreciate it if you do before you exit the room today. And uh, I guess we will call it a day here. I think we got 62 likes. So. Yeah. On a Saturday. Okay. So next time around, I will do a later live stream because I think this one was a bit early. So um, as hopefully Saturday night works for most people. I guess we could do it on a Sunday as well. But, yeah. Okay. Uh, 7 p.m. Eastern time, USA. Okay. Okay. Got it. Okay, guys. That's it for today. Uh, short live stream. Sorry about that, but got a bunch of things going on. So maybe I'll do another one next weekend, but I'll just push it out to a later time. 
and uh, we'll go from there. So thank you guys so much, and I will see everyone next time. Bye.